guys, it's Don here. I am on the boat today. It's a bit windy and kind of cold out there, but um, we're all buttoned up tight inside here. The first day up here when I get to the boat is kind of provisioning day when I just got to get myself some groceries. That's all done now, so we can start on projects. But the first one we're going to start on is one that for a Utah boy is quite amazing. So you recall, if you've watched my Jeep CJ5 rebuild, that every time I bought an order from Summit Racing, I got a $100 off gift card from Naked Wines. Well, look at this. I have in front of me here a box from NakedWines.com. You cannot ship wine into Utah. So I always just was able to, uh, all I could do is stack those boxes up or those cards up and not do anything with them. So but you can ship wine into Washington. So I have done so. I'm gonna bust this thing open and see what we got in here. Um, there's just a collection of different wines. So I'm gonna open that up and then I'm gonna walk you around. We're gonna talk about some projects. All right, well, the party's on at my house. Um, so yeah, there we go. 12 bottles of wine. Um, I think I spent $60 for the batch or something like that. Maybe 80, I don't recall exactly. But anyway, um, now what I need to do is clean out the bar in the back back there. Um, I haven't really shown you that up close, but the previous owner left all his old bottles of Scotch whiskey. Most of them have like one shot left in them. I'm not a whiskey drinker. So I'm gonna clean those out and put these up there, a good deal of these because, I don't know, maybe that's not a great place, but I don't really have a wine stand down here. I'll have to, I'll have to give that some thought. But anyway, there we go. Um, first little task, about halfway done for the morning. It is windy today. Boat's rocking around pretty good in our slip here. I'll spin you around real quick and just give you a quick look at the... This is the marina. You can see we're getting little waves right here in the marina and we're blocked by buildings on that side, mountains on that side. Got a train going by back there. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a good day to be working inside today. So a couple things I'm going to spin you around here and give you a quick look at that I'm going to try to take care of on my quick list of stuff that I kind of want to isn't working just remove it and get rid of it so this green thing I believe was like a infrared motion sensor or door sensor I think there was a sensor on the other side over there somewhere and you know it could if you broke the beam the alarm would go off we have this thing which I think was that old alarm you see we had an away and a home button and whatnot that is not working we have an old camera up here that is also not working. And we still have all the old owner's um, bar set up here. I don't drink um, malt whiskey. I just don't. So that's going to all go in the garbage. We have a fire extinguisher here that looks like it's in good shape, but then just 18 20 inches away we got another fire extinguisher right there so um if, if we get caught without a fire extinguisher within easy reach it wasn't because the guy didn't try this doesn't work but not going to worry about trying to take that out today and um we got a one of our many compartments full of stuff here so much stuff nothing ever got thrown away it looks like and this sink has an issue where the faucet's not really hooked down i do use this to fill the dog's bowl so let's let's um 
that's a quick look at some of the stuff up here that I'm, I'm kind of trying to make a big pass to the garbage. So I'm just trying to kind of collect my thoughts about what needs to go with me. So let's step inside and I'll show you a couple things in there that are culprits or that are candidates for removal. Okay, we're stepping inside and I'll just show you what we've got here. So we have a little bookshelf here with our three inch thick piloting and seamanship book. Not sure. I can promise I'll get that whole thing read. And um, on my left down low here, we have a cabinet with uh, person, personal flotation devices in it. Those are all good, looks like. But this cabinet right here is a nice little cabinet, plenty of room in there, but it is full of old uh, passage maker magazines from 2009, 2010. It's got, it looks like it's got a ton of books in there. It's got these little tide and current almanacs for Puget Sound, but the problem is, is they're all from old years, so I don't think there's any good. Uh, we got a boaters game called Who's the Skipper? I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, yeah, most of that crap's going in the recycle bin up there, and my plan is to use this as a spot for gloves and um, those wireless headphones for when we're going docking and we need to be able to talk to each other and so forth. So I plan on emptying that thing out. As we step down into the cabin down here, I'm going to take you around to the back side here and show you kind of, I think, today's first project. is This is the old entertainment center. Um, how many of you have seen a VCR lately? So a VCR DVD combo doesn't appear to work. I plugged in, stuck a DVD in, it didn't work. This TV I'm not using, and this is the one that kind of resorts to power on if the power goes out and it comes back on. So my plan is to take both of those out and toss those. This little manually made homemade compartment at the top looks to me like it was made for their um, dish box. So I think I told you that I bought that cellular signal booster. And um, I think that the nice thing about this is this antenna right here goes up to the old dish, which is up on the top up there. I'll show you that when I start working on that. So that should give me a way to hook my new cable to that cable and pull it back and pull my cable through to hook up the um, cellular booster. I kind of would like to have that booster somewhere up in this area but it might go here or inside of this compartment. So I haven't seen the actual inside chunk yet, so I don't know how big it needs to be, but there is an, also a transformer box that can go in there because we know we got power there. So TV and the VCR are gonna go. Um, we're gonna try not to bother the sleeping dog, but then we've got this wooden chest here and um, well, I'll just show you what's in it. It's just junk. So this guy didn't throw anything away. And um, I pulled a couple things out of there that looked like they were okay. There was like a set of road markers for your anchor road to mark off your different depths. Um, I'll keep those. There's a compartment behind it that is completely empty, I believe. There's a compartment behind that blue chair back in there that's empty. Um, so those might be good places for stashing extra food and so forth when we're wanting to go a long ways without having to stop. But I don't really need this cabinet thing here. So I think I'm gonna get rid of it.
Okay, so um, I've been at this about maybe an hour, probably not that quite that long. Um, I'll just bring you up to speed on a couple of things here. So here's what this space looks like now. I put the trim back around and um, I might just see if I can't fit a piece of wood in there to begin with to close that up, maybe put some decorative thing over there. I'll hang my picture back up. But I took that lamp down um, and I just wanted to show you what, what went on here. So I was pulling this cable out behind the thing and I was like, well, that doesn't look like regular 110 cabling, but it goes in this spiffy little hole in the wall. And if we come down here below this cabinet, oh, there, it comes out of the hole and goes over there and is plugged in. So, um, not sure Underwriters Laboratory would approve of that. So, what I'm going to do, I think he probably got in there by way of this cabinet. But I think I'm going to fish that wire back out of here. And um, this wall has a little bit of water damage here. He has had the windows rebedded, so this is fixed, but it hasn't really been fixed up here. So this wall could use a little stain and um, patching you can see where all there's a lot of screw holes in the wall there not sure why there was quite so many but i will get that cable out of there first i was like oh well there's my cable for the next wall outlet or the next lamp but um if anything goes there i think i might put one of those floor lamp they're making those now that are the kind of the led stand in the corner lamp this might be a good place for one of those, just to add a little mood lighting to the room. So I'm going to fish that cord out of the wall. I'm going to fire up the vacuum and clean out the cubby up here where the TV was. And um, then I think I'll start to haul all this garbage up onto the back deck in anticipation of getting one of those little carts and loading that thing up to the gills and hauling this stuff all off to the garbage. Oh, we just missed it. I think that was the SS Minnow um, from Gilligan's Island. You don't know who Gilligan's Island is. Um, anyway, it's going back out. I think that boat might have been in here for a survey today. So if I'd have been a little quicker, we might have got a good look at it. It's an old traditional, lots of wood boat. Gorgeous looking old thing. There's also a sailboat in here that at some point I'll probably walk you by. It's called Heirloom, I think. A-I-R Loom. It's old, classic wood sailboat. You know, there's something to be said about those beautiful old boats like that. But anyway, um, I found my, so let me walk you down in the back here again. So in undoing all these little cubbies and cabinets, I ended this one here to try to see where some of this stuff went. And I was trying to figure out what I had here. I thought at first glance, I couldn't see this very well. I thought it was a barometer. But nope, this is our this is our wind speed indicator off the little spinny thing up on the back. So um, obviously that's not tied into our Simrad up there and our our uh, navigation station. But I'll probably put that back in. But you know what I was thinking? I'd, I'd rather have that inside the boat rather than here by the bar. <laughs> Although, hold on, let's explore that logic. If you're looking at that wind speed indicator and it's way up there, maybe where you want to take in that information is right here at the bar. So <laughs> maybe there was some logic in placing it here. Um, but there was also a piece of coax here terminated right below the thing. So maybe at some point they would move cables around and put a TV up here and sit up here and watch a game or something. So yeah, it's making, we're making good progress. Um, I'm getting a pretty good pile of stuff. I've taken down the camera and the thing that was back here. So they were just held in place with um, double-sided Velcro. So the little cleanup to do, but those are here. And that was the hole that the cables went through. Um, so that'll be okay. Again, I'll take that green thing off there, but yeah, at some point here, pretty soon, I'm going to have to haul some of this stuff up off of out of the cabin here, because as you can see, like I said, I'm getting a pretty good pile of stuff down here.
Got a spectator sitting back here checking out my work. What you doing, man? Anyway, uh, here's where we're at so far. So I thought I could take this light fixture down up here and get to where the coax and the power to that dish came through. I can't really even feel them. And I thought those were those cables, but those are obviously not. Those are coming over here uh, somewhere else. So I'll have to trace those, figure out where they're going. But I took, I have down the post that was holding this up. So I think what I can do now, there was a mounting bracket for that post to kind of secure it to the back of the radar arch there. So I'm going to open up the WeBoost now and look at the antenna and see what I can do about hooking that thing up up there. Well, I guess all these holes in the top of the radar arch will only be a problem if it rains. Um, not sealed very well around the, the wires or that bracket for the air speed indicator thing, wind speed indicator. And over on the other side, here's some holes here. Not sure what was going through there, but those are wide open. All right, well, it looks like that bracket that was holding that post upright is going to work okay, except I don't have a drill. I got to drill a screw hole through it, so I might be stymied for right now. Um, this light fixture that I took down, I think I showed it to you, uh, was had obviously been getting water in it. And the switch was, like, broken. It's all rusty. Uh, there are some of these kicking around downstairs somewhere. So I can fix that. But you also saw that hole over here on the port side by whatever was used to go with this bracket right here. Um, there's a hole dropping right down into here, I believe, that you could, I can stick my finger down in through. So water can egress in through there. And then I don't know how it gets out from there, but that's not cool. And... Um, Looks like my big yellow lights are lights. Uh, this is my cable up here for the radar. So no help to take this cover here off. So I will close this back up. Um, yeah, well, wasn't really had any help to take that off, but and then I'll just deal with that light socket there. Fix that thing up. Um, obviously, I just need to wire new light into there and I don't know I think I'm not sure what that is but that's not part of it I don't believe so those can go back up in there for now we'll assume those are okay but um, not gonna get my that isn't the cable that I thought it was but if I hang that thing off that bracket which will put it right there then I may be able to bring my cable in and run it down the back side of the post there or even bring it you know, up over the, the, behind the canvas there and come up and tie it to these and come down and go in that same point there. So uh, we'll have to see where that goes, but water gets everywhere up here. You gotta seal the stuff up. You can't leave a hole in the roof, not in the roof, especially. Well, I mean, the only the worst, worst place is in the hole down below the water, but um, just bad to have it in the top. So I'll go see if I can rummage around find one of those lights and uh, See if I can get that sorted out and I'll put this cover back on and then um, I think I'm gonna have to get me a drill Drill hole to mount this bracket, but then I think this bracket right here, which can turn 90 degrees will go just like that on that bracket It will be I think that will put it completely behind the radar which should be fine and then we'll bring our cable in and then essentially from about this area somewhere down in here is the wall down inside the, the main salon. So if, if we go straight down from here, basically is where that back wall is. So this will be the area we'll want to have the inside um, kind of broadcasting forward to boost our, our signal up. So there we go. The plan is taking shape. Um, but as with many projects, it's going in fits and starts.
off to a little bit of a rocky start. The WeBoost installation is now moving along pretty well. So I'll show you what I've done. I did go get a new 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter basically and wired it in here temporarily into that connector block back in the hole in there. And I now have power to the WeBoost. If I click this guy on, see we light up. We're all good to go. So um, that's not permanent, but what I'm going to do next is, remember I said yesterday I pulled some parachute cord up from the bottom and down from the top and whatnot. So I'm going to start to get my cabling run for, for good. Um, we're going to step up here on the bridge for a minute. So remember this is our spot where this, this parachute cord goes out to the back and I need to still find this wire coming down through the chase down into the side of the hole over here so that I can pull it up. Now, my expectation is it's wired into that block somewhere too, but I think it's, it's just really tough to see in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get my little LED light set it in there, shove the camera in there, try to film up into the side of the hole and see if I can figure out where that wire's coming from. And then watch the video and see if I can figure out what's going on there. So I'll do that. And then once I can pull that wire all the way down through, that will allow me to pull parachute cord all the way down through that chase. Then I can tie on to my external antenna cord pull it back up so simple right all I gotta do is get through the little chase there so let's do that figure out if we can find out where that hole goes okay so I kind of figured out that I was not gonna be able to pull that wire back down through so I ran into town and picked up an electrician's fish tape and decided to go in from the bottom up with the fish tape I knew I was going to the right hole to get into that chase through the radar arch and so finally had some success pushing that up through and pulling a piece of twine or that parachute cord up with it. All right, well, um, the annoying thing about doing these jobs on the boat so far is every tool that I need, I have back in Salt Lake, but I don't have on the boat. So I had to go get an electrician's fish tape and I ran it from the bottom where I could see the hole going up into this chase. And I brought it clear up to here. So I brought my, my uh, pole string here. I've left a loop here. I'm going to pull enough out of this so that when I run my wire back in, I can leave this pull string in that chase. So I won't have to do that again. And I already tried to pull this out once with that silly loop on there and that kept getting jammed up. So I'm cutting that thing off so I can pull this right back out. And the next time we'll just either bend another loop or, um, just taped to the end of it, but that loop's not fitting back very well. It's hanging up on something. So I'm just gonna cut that off, pull that back out, pull enough of my pull string up here so that I can get all the way back down through there and leave this here. 
And then this short one is my pull string that just goes up through to back there to the antenna bracket. So I think we're making progress. Um, I'll tell you quietly, but not, so I'm that crow that was just you heard crowing. The neighbor to my north hates that crow. <laughs> he stands up there and shakes his fist at him and yells at him and that him and the seagulls. So Gray and I have uh, are conspiring to train that crow to be my buddy. So I've been throwing little bits of dog food up on the back of the boat for him. So I'm just making trouble. So anyway, um, good progress. I'll uh, now I'll be able to get something done. So I'll get this outdoor antenna pulled all the way back through down in the bottom and then I'll determine if I'm going to leave it back in that bar area or go clear down into the back cabin where that old TV was put it in there somewhere so we'll see how it goes okay success so far so what I did is I just tried to kind of tape a really tapered end to the tape and there's my antenna so we're now down into the bar area and if I look, I think I have enough room to go down to that cupboard, which is right down below here. I can see the bottom of sink from that area. So my only issue, so I have a piece of string going down there. The only problem is that string went through a hole that was pretty small. And I'm not sure my coax antenna here is going to fit through that hole. Gosh, if it had gone through that bigger hole right there, wouldn't that be lovely? See that big hole? I couldn't have gone through that, huh? I have to go through that little one in the front. See where that orange wires go, orange strings dropping down. So I will see. I don't think it's going to fit there. But maybe there's a way to access that. I might just pull this broken refrigerator out of here because I kind of have an idea that if I get that thing out of there, I might see all kinds of wonderful things that I can get access to so I might just pull that out for now it doesn't work I don't even know if it's hooked up I think if I can, I can yank it out of there see if I can work behind it again I've already taken this piece off and that's that shelf that you see comes out to here so that isn't really offering me any opportunity to get down there but I'm gonna go look in the cupboard so let me just show you where I'm talking about real quick here so if we come down inside again so here's the other end of that string. And again, we are looking at the bottom of the bar sink right there. So I'm really close. All right, at this point, I have just made up my mind that this ice maker has got to come out. I need to be able to see what's behind it. I need to be able to see if I can work through that area where it is. So I started to rip that thing out. All right, well, I filmed a bunch of that with the other camera that doesn't have the microphone, and I talked to you a lot, so I don't know if you could hear me very well, but I got the ice maker out. That thing came out. Well, it's not totally out yet. I got to unhook the wire and the plumbing, but that thing came a millimeter at a time. I had pulled the bottom. It'd shift a little, push down on the top. It'd shift a little. I mean, I just walked it out literally a millimeter at a time what a tight fit that was well, let's have a pier down in here and see what we've got this is the area where the ice maker was so it was plugged in um, the power cord is taped to the water the water is um, does have a butterfly valve on it it was still turned on I've shut it off but look at that there's my pulling string that's going into that little cabinet and I poked around in here and look at that that says 12 volt and 110 volt now the 110 volts falling out of the socket but it's good to have 12 volt right there because that's what my power supply for the we boost is it's 12 volt hence our 12 volt power outlet so it looks to me like if that's true i'll be able to find power right there although now that I can see I can pull easily now, I could run my 
cable or my wire I did get some extra wire I can bring it into that junction block which I'll probably do anyway and label it but um, give me one second I'll show you why I think part of the reason this ice maker didn't work okay so hang on that is the, <laughs> the radiator for the thing and that thing is the grossest dirtiest plugged up thing I have ever seen so that's what killed your ice maker man so you never cleaned it never maintained that thing probably if you'd have blown that out or vacuumed that out a time or two we wouldn't have been in this situation but it's an old piece of junk anyway it's ugly it's nasty I'm getting it out of here so I'm not turning back but boy I'm starting to get a little enthusiastic that we might get this job done tonight okay not totally done but I have brought the power in over the wall that I had temporarily wired into my new box or my new 12 volt plug up there we got power all our antennas are hooked up and for right now I just have the indoor one kind of hanging over the top here and and my pull string of course which we're gonna chop off probably and leave a chunk of that in here but um, it's getting a little towards the dinner time part of the day and I know the dog's gonna want to go for another walk here pretty soon so we're good enough to run for tomorrow Well, just to prove that we can actually finish a project, this is the bar area with everything put back in. The wind indicator is still working. It's not too breezy today, but you can see it wiggling a little bit there. And if we come down here to where our ice maker was, you can see that everything is now labeled. This is the WeBoost cabling. My pull string is still in there and we're ready to go work inside get our plug put back on so i did decide I, I took this plug disconnected it from here i'll take it back in and hook it all up inside i am there's no reason i couldn't cut the plug off the wee boost and not and forego this except that a i like that the thing has its own power switch on it and b if i were to decide that i wanted to well, whatever that's the only reason i was just thinking maybe i could put it in the truck but no it wouldn't i'd have to take all the antenna down and all that so anyway that's why i'm leaving it on there i'll wire this in to the other end of my cabling that i'm run inside of that cabinet down there i'll hook up the hook everything back up tie it up label it up and we'll be done all right i think we can officially call the we boost installation complete so let me just show you what we've got in our little cabinet here that used to be a home for the television for the old tv so our cabling comes in i've got my 
12 volt thing with the switch where I can get at it right here. And the rest of that cable kind of behind the wall. Got the Wii Boost mounted, got the antenna there, and there's our um, Verizon deal. Now, I did read, you know, in the book, it said, you know, have this thing 18 inches, no more than 24 inches or whatever, away from the actual device that's going to be talking to it. So there we go. We got those there. I have checked the SPRC number, SRPC number, whatever, on the, the that Verizon thing. With the WeBoost turned off, it shows us at like minus 102 decibels, which is shows then as good. With it turned on, we're at negative 86 or 82 or something like that dB, which it marks as excellent. So went from good to excellent, and we're in the marina, so we'll see what happens once we get out on the wild blue yonder. So, um, yeah, project done.